Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes, celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Oh, yes, and it's show number 171 of the Irish Family History and Genealogy Podcast with curious news and notes from Ireland from the Irish Roots Cafe. Among today's topics, the family name of the day is Coleman. Number two, the county of the month we'll say is Wicklow. Number three, searching for Hayes, Daly, Kellett, Joyce, and O'Connor. Number four, curious news about Irish foghorns. Number five, webpage of the month, uh, Dan Bowles Pumpkin. I wonder what that might be about about this time of year. Uh, number six, the best pub in Ireland has been named. I think I talked about that before, but it just seems a curious thing to name a certain pub the best in the world. Uh, and a one-minute podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about Skibbereen, the uh, Irish famine song. And remember to listen to all of our podcasts at irishroots.com. We've got free ones and archived ones and member-only ones. Oh, well, it's time for the notes for this week. It's, it's getting a little easier here now. Uh, at the cafe, we don't have a lot of new things happening this week. Uh, November 6th, though, there are some Irish music workshops at the Irish Museum in Kansas City at the Union Station, according to this press release. And it says uh, it includes the boron and the tin whistle and the singing and the fiddle and more. I think I'll go to that again this year. I went, uh, drove up there last year and went in, and it was a lot of fun. So I think I'll do that again. Uh, and number two, the Irish Song Festival podcast, uh, our sister podcast here, uh, features Karen with Red is the Rose this week. So you might not want to miss that. Be sure to tune into uh, that song and to the interview we uh, did with Karen. And we've done several other, we've done three or four already in that series. And we've got, gosh, another seven or so to come. I've got two people that might be late entries. They say they're ready, but I can't seem to run them down. You know how that is. They're all ready to be a star, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, was that this week? Was that with this week, Mike? I didn't know. So we're going to have to see what they can do, but uh, we've got some good ones coming up. One of, them's, one of the songs is going to be an instrumental, and that's interesting with some uh, Gaelic brass. That's real interesting. And we've got, uh, we've got a couple other interesting entries. We've got folks from Ireland and, and what they think Shan Nose is, and we've got folks from America and Connecticut and... Kansas and Missouri. Uh, so don't forget about that podcast. I want you all to at least to listen to one or two of them just to have some fun with it. And uh, it's free, so why not? That's always a good way to go. Hey, here we come up to the next segment. <laughs> Well, now it's time for the one minute podcast uh, segment. I think I'll just talk a little bit about Skibbereen. I was looking through uh, some of the early American, uh, Irish American songs, and I saw Skibbereen, and I saw the lyrics to it. And, you know, if you read the lyrics, you understand how serious they are. If you might have been descended from one of the people that uh, uh, was that song was about, really. Uh, but I listened to other people play that song, and it's sort of sing-songy, and it might be a happy song. It might be, I don't know. It seemed sort of indiscriminate. So I thought, well, I might sing it and... Uh, Sing it the way I felt it, or say it without any, uh, say a song, as Joheen would say. But this talks about the, there was a village of Skibbereen. And if you're, if you're listening to this Irish Family History and Genealogy podcast, that's really why I picked it, because it's about the life that drove these, this fella, this guy, this family from Skibbereen, County Cork, Ireland, to America. And it starts off with a young boy asking his dad, 
You know, you talk about Ireland like it's heaven and a king could live there, and I hear it all the time. And he says, why in the world did you leave it then? And, uh, you know, I can ring true. I can see how we can get a little poetic and a little, uh, a little fond, a little too fond in our remembrances sometimes of past events. But the father goes on to slow, slowly explain that uh, he couldn't pay the taxes, he couldn't pay the rent, the landlord came and they burn out his roof. And, of course, he came along with several sheriffs, you know, or bailiffs uh, to make sure that the law was enforced. And then, oh, and by the way, his mother died lying on the stony ground, uh, sitting there uh, watching all this happen in anguish. And, oh, and by the way, you were only two years old and you were real frail, but I couldn't leave you. I couldn't leave you in Ireland with my friends because you were my son. You bore your father's name. And uh, then it even goes on. It talks it talks about how he, he wrapped him up in his coat of more, which was his big coat. And he, he got up and he left and he went out and he even got chased through the mountains for being a traitor to the queen. And uh, then he just got up and he had to say goodbye to old Skibbereen. So hope you listen to the song this week on the song podcast. Well, this is a reminder, you know, we publish more Irish genealogy books than anyone in the world, and uh, the book of the month is County Kildare, Wicklow, and Carlow, Ireland. I think we'll focus on Wicklow today. Uh, Genealogy and Family History Notes, that's part of our 34-book set on Irish family history. I've got a link to that book with uh, detailed instructions on my uh, uh, blog, and we've also got it, of course, on our webpage. A lot of families in this book. Wicklow is not quite as well known as some of the towns on the West Coast or as the counties, but uh, names like Byrne and Doyle and, of course, Murphy and Kelly, Cavanaugh, Nolan, uh, Brian Kehoe, Lawler, Toole, Dunn, Farrell, and Redmond. Uh, you know, you're going to find them as primary names, uh, uh, numerous names in that county in oh, say, the last half of the uh, 1800s, and that means probably for the first half of the 1800s, too. And we included some special uh, family history notes uh, for a few families in that book, and that included Dowling and uh, Kavanaugh and Kelly and MacDonald and uh, Nolan, O'Byrne, Ryan of Idrone, uh, O'Murphy of Carlow, and O'Neillan of Kildare. Uh, and, and also we give the names from the confiscations, which is interesting. You know, did they lose their land and where did they go after that? And that might be uh, a written record that connect you to your ancestors. There's also some illustration in the book. Uh, we've got one of the Sutton family and of a Wicklow waterfall and of White's Castle and uh, Carberry Castle and Carlow Castle and uh, Lye or MacLysach of Rathbride. And then we also list the uh, families on the Four Masters map, the map of the Four Masters in the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters, and that might give you some clues to possible family locations. Now, in Wicklow, gosh, what we, we had uh, uh, Cheevers and Fitz Eustace and Fitzgerald and Fitzwilliam, and, of course, these were a lot of the lords, you know, wouldn't you know, and the barons, uh, not always the old Irish families that they show on those maps. But on the other hand, sometimes it is. And hey, remember, we've got a, plod, a podcast that I am talking to right now and a blog reader and the blog itself. Uh, be sure to check out two or three of them. Now, what else have we got here in this book uh, on the Four Masters map? Well, we show some people in Carlo, too. You got the Butlers and Carew and Cheevers, uh, Coke and Eustace, some more Fitzgeralds, uh, Grace and Lombard. And boy, you even got Strongbow. Hmm. A lot of history tied to Strongbow, if you haven't heard it yet. And let's go up to Kildare. Gosh, there's all kinds of families listed there. Aylmer and Birmingham and Burke and Delahoyd. Uh, more Fitzgeralds. Fitzhenry, McDonnell, O'Carry, O'Colgan, O'Connell, O'Toole, O'Morrigan. We could write a, a song about that, couldn't we? Uh, quite a few people. So that's just an example of uh, one of the books from the Irish Families Project, which has 34 volumes into it all together. And... Uh, I thought you might enjoy hearing a little bit about what it contains. And remember that set, several counties, we have two books on, separate books, separate information. And the first volume in that series, uh, the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small, contains information on families from every county in Ireland. And then we add new information in the books just on that county. So don't be confused. And the first seven uh, volumes or or so have... uh, uh, 
Oh, gosh, uh, usually a couple hundred pages at least. The first volume has 400 pages in it with, I think, almost a 1,000 illustrations in that, in that volume. Uh, so there's plenty of information to dig up. Now, the first seven or eight volumes, uh, like I said, uh, you've got some hardbound editions there, and they, they really focus on just uh, thousands of family histories. Then the rest of the series, which we call the spiral-bound Irish County uh, history, genealogy, and family history notes. Uh, those books are are a little bit smaller, and they contain information just on one county. But it's not just a big collection of family histories. There'll be a few family histories in there, some notes. Uh, but if if we found us like the census of 1659, well, I put the whole census of 1659 for that family in that uh, for that county in that book, so you can look in a little more detail than just reading. Uh, in 1659, they were found in County so-and-so. You can actually see some of the names that were there. The main Irish names uh, in each barony are listed when they have that. And they also have the uh, names of the titulados. And those are the important people, don't you know? And they're listed in there, too. They have their whole names listed. Uh, most of the Irish families just have the surname listed. Uh, but you can narrow down the location in Ireland by barony within the county. And that can help you, too, because you know it's a, uh, it's a detective story. And this is just uh, another piece of information you can plug into to try to learn a little bit more about your family and what was going on around them. And uh, maybe friends of your family now or friends of your family in Ireland, you just never knew it. And we said the best pub in Ireland had been named, but what county is it in? Uh, remember, you should remember something like that. It's important. This is the second time I brought it up. Uh, a, and it's time to raise our eyes skyward now. Give thanks and ask for help. Here are today's magnificent seven. Number one, O. Henry. Sounds like it should be O. Henry, but it's O A N R A I. O. Henry, Photography of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Your book of Irish families, great and small, has shipped. I've been up to Cheyenne. That's a nice little place. Uh, searching for Coleman, Ha, Driscoll, and Sharon. Number two, uh, Brendan Hayes of Fort Worth, Texas. Welcome as a member. Searching for Hayes and Daly and O'Brien in County Clare, Ireland. Number three, Lynn Berry of Glay Morgan, uh, Great Britain. Welcome as a member. Henry Patrick Kellett, born Ireland somewhere on St. Patrick's Day in 1823, 1833. And the uh, father, Edward Kellett. Uh, see, Henry worked for the family of the Earl of Clare in London. Might make it easier to trace. Number four, Michael McGuire of San Antonio, Texas. Your county Roscommon genealogy book has shipped. Number five, Carrie Endon of Perth, Australia. Welcome as a new member. And they're interested in the Joyce family of County Galway and the McMahon family of County Clare. Number six, Mike O'Connor of Gardner, Kansas. Welcome as a uh, full member. You might be interested in the uh, O'Connor podcast we did a few weeks back. And Mike is also a member of the Irish class, uh, Irish language class being taught by Renata down at the Irish Museum. So he's hot on the trail. And number seven, welcome new member Larry Cur Curtis of Rydell, Georgia. Interested in the Quakers, the Friends in Ireland. Also, the Curtis name in Ireland, England, and America. Hey, before we move on to the uh, family name of the day or the Irish family of the day, I want to thank everybody, every every member, every uh, sponsor, every everyone who gets one of our books. Uh, without your support, these podcasts would not be a possible, and especially in during, in these days. All the help we can get is appreciated. Uh, the spelling, the name today is going to be Coleman. And of course, you can spell that a lot of ways. Our member spells it C-O-L-M-A-N. And all, most of the time I see it spelled C-O-L-E-M-A-N. And I've had people looking for that name for years. Over 10 years, I know people looking for Coleman, uh, a new member signing up. Uh, related spellings of the name, you can have an O in front of the name. And not quite as often, you can see it with an M like Mac Coleman. And uh, sometimes it's spelled C-O-L-E, man. And sometimes it's C-O-A-L, man. 
And sometimes it spells cloven or clovain, and that's based on the Irish spelling. More about that in a little bit. Uh, Variant spelling groups number 302 and number 2170 from the Guide to Various Spellings of Irish Family Names. I've got a link to that on the blog, and it's on the webpage. Uh, History of the name. Well, if you take a look at Coleman families in Ireland, you might find they come from several different places. Now, some of the name uh, are originally from England and of English heritage. They settled in Ireland over time. And of the older Irish of the name, some are going to come from the older spelling, uh, the older Irish spelling of Clovain or Clomain, C-L-U-M-H. A-I-N, which became Coleman and Clifford in County Cork, Ireland. Now, Mac Coleman, of course, if that Mac's been dropped, you don't know if you're looking for a Mac or an O family, but they're another independent family of the name, and they're found as a chief clan of County Louth in the old days. And Mac Coleman is also cited as a variant spelling of Mac Calmont that's found in County, County Antrim up north there, and that's in the 17th century. And that name might likely be of Scottish origin, uh, coming from the Buchanan clan, don't you know? I think you could look up a kilt in that instance. And uh, there's a lot more in the book, uh, the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small, but that gives you an idea about the family and the name and some of the problems you might encounter, things to be aware of. And uh, let me see, we're looking in the Irish family coats of arms from the Irish Book of Arms. Now, my... Uh, the current edition, second edition, does not have that in there. I did have a reference in the first edition of the Irish Book of Arms, but I, I didn't have any real documentation to back a lot of those up. They were just passed on, so I decided on the second edition I'd get a little more official. So uh, it's not in there, but let not your heart be bothered. It's it's truly an Irish name, we know. And, hey, coming up later in this episode, where did the bottle that was thrown in the ocean in Florida end up? Could you guess? And I wonder who found it on what beach in what country. I bet you're guessing already, but can you guess the county? That's the real question. Uh, You never know for sure. Well, now I think we're going to come up and uh, take one little look at the uh, free Master Online Index and type in Coleman and see what we find. Well, now, the Coleman name, what do we have here? It's... uh, Oh, there's not much of a problem. There's over 65 entries. I typed it in here onto the web page, onto our master search thing. It's a free for everybody. Uh, you're going to find several re- references to O. Coleman in the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters. And Coleman is found in the 1659 census and in the Birth Index of Ireland. And you're also going to find it in the Tribes and Customs of High Many or Humane, or there's all kinds of ways to pronounce that. Uh, and you're going to find Matt Coleman in Irish Genealogies, Volume 3 of Keating's History. It's published separately as well as part of the set that was Keating's History. And you're also going to find O. Coleman listed in the Milesian Families of Ireland. That's a book that tries to trace back all the old families in Ireland, and they're listed in there. And you're also going to find Mac Colmain. That means it's got an E on the end of that name in the Scottish Mac. So that might be a clue there, too. And number, uh, let's just take number seven, for example. There's an H. Coleman in the County Limerick Genealogy and Family History Notes. And gosh, we're in several other books there in the uh, Irish Family Series. You can look up your name uh, on your own, too. Just go to the uh, irishroots.com and look up uh, in the Master Index, and it'll tell you what books your name appear in. Well, now it's time for the uh, Round the World in Irish Ways, the web pages and videos of the month that we happen to run into. Hey, we got a good one. Clan Coleman Genealogy and Family History, branches that descend from John Coleman, great-grandson of Daniel Coleman, who was born in Turlamore, County Mayo, Ireland, 1744. Take a look at that. Uh, link on the blog. Number two, uh, Bangor Harbor Foghorn, Mew Lighthouse, Copeland Island. On the day the foghorn is to be turned off, you got a group of, uh, is that a bunch of students there on that boat? They're driving out to hear the last foghorn sound up there. Number three, Crag Cave, Castle Island, County Kerry. We've got several people tied into Castle Island, uh, and they've discovered this cave in 1983. 
It must have been hidden for a long time, or maybe it just broke through so they found it. But it's a beautiful underground world, they say, and the YouTube shows it to you, so you can take a look. And they've even got some divers going in down there, diving into some of the deeper parts. And number four, uh, St. Coleman's Well video. And they say that's historically linked to the Mangan family. And I watched that, and they just they had to go in there and clean it out. It was all overgrown and filled in with uh, with plants and dirt and things. I think they climbed in there and cleaned it all out. And uh, uh, they say it's been a, a project of the family for generations. So Grandpa and Dad and, and Grandson all get together. And, my gosh, there's some of the girls were in there, too, working and uh, all making points with St. Coleman. So that's it for the... Uh, uh, web pages and videos all the links are on my blog so be sure to check that out and now what do we got oh everybody's favorite curious news and notes well let me see uh, from the people who think they know everything the best pub in the world has been named by the lonely planet guide and it's the Harbor Bay uh, Bar, lo located in Bray County, Wicklow. And the manager, Colin O'Toole, says he is delighted. And that's just that's just the way you should accept these sorts of things. They come and go, and you don't know who's giving out the name for what reason. But uh, I just find it curious. There's a list of a top ten of everything anymore. And uh, who are the people behind all these lists is what is really important. Number two, the island of Owe was deserted in 1977 off the coast of Donegal, complete with poteen-making equipment areas in caves, and nine houses now are at least back seasonally inhabited for the first time, and they celebrated their first mass in 40 years. You can read about the revival uh, on online. Just click the link on the blog. And, hey, another note on Castle Island. Uh, Castle Island Bypass is now open in County Kerry, and that should improve your travel times and congestion. And uh, all these tourists coming over there have just boggled things up. I remember I was one of those tourists. And uh, this will make it a little bit easier. Number four, Dan Bowles of Wisconsin in the USA has seen his 1,100-pound pumpkin shipped to Ireland to compete in the heaviest pumpkin contest in County Cavan. And Jimmy Murray, who's a member of the committee on the Biggest Pumpkin Contest, uh, noted that they had been looking forward to its arrival for a while. And I bet old Dan's pretty happy. And I think that was a uh, a local supermarket chain sponsored the delivery of that. And uh, boy, oh boy, I tell you what, I wonder what the air for was, airfare was for that pumpkin. Hey, number five, next year the foghorns along the Irish coast are to be turned off. Uh, a sign of the times, I guess, and some people, the little guys especially, are against it. And uh, what about all the romantics out there? They like to hear that foghorn in the night. But they're going to start turning them off one at a time. Got a link on the blog to the uh, article in the independent.ie. Number six, Adam Flannery found a bottle on the beach which had been thrown into the ocean over a year ago from Florida, some 3,700 miles away, part of an experiment. Some 150 bottles had been launched by a high school in the U.S. Well, what do you know? And number seven, according to recent studies, and it's always being backed up, the Irish still remain among the happiest in Europe. And they're even less likely to be sick or depressed. Now, how does that just, how does that go along with all those pubs that are in the country? I don't know. Some people say the results would be the opposite, but... Uh, here we've got a, a, a record that you just can't contest with. Uh, that, that's been in the news a couple of times here lately, so you can see it on the blog if you want to read some of the stories in the notes. Uh, but that's it for today. We sure enjoyed you being here. I hope you're listening to the Irish Song uh, uh, podcast. Maybe you'll join into that one day, you know. You find a, a, a theme that you like, and you'll be able to jump in and sing. And we're going to start our videos here pretty soon, too. Uh, get those back going. Uh, for Irish history and genealogy questions, and uh, that'll be coming up real quick. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. 
And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important and write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, Get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Oh, my God.